Good, good. Did you guys sit through the panel? Uh, I did not. Oh. <laughs> um, Jamie, we've heard a lot of actresses talk in the past about Harley Quinn and like yeah. what took and lured them to that role, but this is a new take on Harley Quinn. Yes, so it is. what lured you to this new take on the I mean, when first of all it was an offer and I love to work and I needed the work. But also I was kind of confused. I was like, wait, so okay. Let's talk about this Harley Quinn, but they didn't really give me a lot of information of what they wanted. They just kind of gave this like very vague description. I can pull up the email, it's like kind of a joke. Um, and I was quite terrified because I didn't know what they wanted. So, you know, having watched Batman, the animated series growing up, you know, being a 90s kid, um, I had a lot of resources to work with, but I was quite terrified because I didn't know if they wanted me to just do what Arlene Sorkin did because she's a fucking legend. You know, I, I just, I wasn't sure, but um, coming into the booth, they were like, I, I did one take and they were like, oh no, we don't want that. Um, we want to kind of flip the script. We want, you know, Harley Quinn to be really menacing and um, manipulative and Dr. Harley Quinzel to be kind of this fun, bubbly, like unassuming, like disarming person, which kind of has the essence of the Harley Quinn that we're familiar with. Um, so it was kind of interesting to look at. Yeah, I was, as a kind of second part to that question, I was going to say, you know, obviously there's going to be focus and buzz on playing Harley Quinn, yeah. but when I watched the series, I was actually much more intrigued about the path of your more of your civilian yes. persona. Can you talk about that and kind of <laughs> Bruce and sitting down and figuring that all out and uh, yeah being the person who got to put Batman in therapy I mean don't we all just love therapy this is a very modern take <laughs> but um, you know I think the dynamic of the, the liberties of understanding your patient and really empathizing with them and really having them to open up but then how fucked up to be able to use that for her own purpose and, and goal you know it's quite twisted but I think the mystery that she has and the intrigue that she has of Bruce Wayne is like who is this guy you know trying to break him down and trying to get him to open up and talk and you know not having, having any of that I think she really enjoys the challenge Yes. So what are you most excited for a for the fans to see with the version of your Oh my gosh. I kind of love that she has her own agency. You know, she has her own persona and existence without the Joker. I think you really get to see the fun bits of how she really tortures and torments her clients um, later on in the season. And yeah, I think I think you'll be quite surprised because she still has the essence of what we're familiar with, but re-envisioned in a really fun, different way. Yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, speaking of Harley Quinn, as far as her personality is, is she is fun. Yeah. Cool, but then she can be very dark and oh, scary. Oh, yeah. So how do you dive in or delve into those different personalities? I mean, my husband says that I'm very much like Harley Quinn. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> whatever uh, <laughs> we talked about in therapy no but um, it really is fun to be able to play the two different elements because my 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 you know I think my everyday public persona is to be happy and put on a happy face and whatever but honestly sometimes I feel like being Harley Quinn and just like you know sticking it to the man I guess you could say but it is really fun to play someone who is so two-faced and someone who takes that trust from you know, a patient and like using it against them. That is some manipulative stuff that I would never do in my real life, but it is really fun to play. Great. Hey, Jamie, it's Roe Bigger. Hi. Media. Uh, we, we get a lot of seeing this show highlights a lot more of other characters having like kind of like the Batman and Bruce Wayne persona. We're diving deeper into like their other selves. Yeah. With your Harley Quinn, you, which I would say your performance was amazing. Thank you were you. able to, like you said, take your bubbly persona and then dive into that. How yeah. long did it take you before you were able to get those two sides oh, right? Oh, God. I mean, hmm, thank God for vocal lessons. Um, I hate singing, but I took vocal lessons during COVID. But it was kind of cool to, view, to know the difference of using your head voice and using a chest voice, you know, like really um, dropping into a lower register. And it was really fun. And honestly, I right before I did that, I played... Huh. Fucking Anyways, it was for a Netflix show. It was Norse. 
mythology for Zack Snyder and I get to play something really different using taking big swings using my voice and I was like oh I'm going to use that in my little toolbox and use that for um, Harley Quinn so it was kind of fun to play with the different ranges yeah what makes you Harley different from the other Harley Quinn you know she's an independent woman honey she don't need no man no uh, <laughs> that's the big difference but also um, really seeing because you know I think Margot Robbie did such a great job playing the two two different dynamics of Harley Quinn and um, Dr. Harley and Quinzel, but you didn't really get to see much of the doctor side, and I think with this animation you get to see more of, you know, her professional persona versus her menacing side. Unfortunately, it's kind of easy to uh, for Harley Quinn to be perceived by many people as uh, the crazy lady, uh, yeah. the woman who freaked out. Uh, so how careful were you not to reinforce those stereotypes and, and go deep into to Well, I her think mind? just really um, grounding her, right? Coming from a place of understanding, too, because it's quite, it's unbelievable when you play someone who's, first of all, those stereotypes, bullshit. There's always a reason that a woman is mad, right? <laughs> so understanding that, too. But I don't know, it was, um, Bristam did such a great job of grounding all performances and making it real to who we were as, as character actors and bringing these characters to life. Um, he was really able to kind of harbor that and like push us in the right direction to make it really fun and yet so graphic. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Thank you so much. <laughs> Hope you guys have a great evening. What are the plans? What are the plans? What are we doing? Okay, yeah. good. Okay. <laughs> Me too, honey. <laughs> Me too. My God. All right, have a good one, guys. Thank you so much. Thank nice you. to meet you. Nice to meet you.